is that, oh, the, the one that I wanted to talk about is uh, serial number four, which is the one currently being built here. I'll pull up, um, as we're talking, I'll pull up uh, Mary, Boca Chica Mary and NASA space flights uh, video that they produce. Well, I'll just kind of have this on in the background. Um, but they are currently stacking number four, which is reusing some of serial number three parts. Remember, serial number three is the one that uh, kind of collapsed under its own mm -hmm. weight when the bottom fell off <laughs> or not fell off the bottom, like depressurized. Kind of? I don't know what you mean by kind of. Well, yeah, kind of just, kind of just meh. <laughs> the front <laughs> fell off. Have you guys ever seen that skit? The front fell off skit? Mm. Oh mm. my God, I'm going to send it to you guys later. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but so they they are able to reuse a decent amount of serial number three um the whole kind of thrust structure and they're currently stacking it uh into serial number four as we speak serial number five parts already being made elon did say that serial number three will not receive any aero hardware so or serial number four will not receive any aero hardware as they have tweaked it already again so the flaps are already tweaked from the latest versions we've seen um, he oh, said, is that what you mean by arrow? The the top flaps? Yep, the top flaps and the bottom flaps. Uh, All like of that things would be that fly. Anything that yeah that affects the aerodynamic properties of it. And he mentioned the static arrow, so almost meaning, which makes me wonder if there's going to be like strakes on the side, like like non uh, movable wings on the side more. You know, like because the flatter, mm -hmm. the more surface area there is windward, the more it can stop, and the more it can glide too. So if they could switch out some of the there, there's probably some kind of balance there between um, having non-moving strakes on the side. Um, if you increase those, you could potentially decrease the size of your brakes and therefore decrease the size of your um, your your motors. Um, so maybe there's a balance there. They figured out that like, hey, let's just add you know a meter of strake on each side of the vehicle, and then their flaps don't need to be as big. But we'll see. We'll see. That's all total speculation for me. But that means serial number five, which is currently being built and currently has some parts de uh, developed, will be the first one to have the arrow installed, assuming serial number four uh, successfully demonstrates its its three Raptor hop and things like that. So mm. they're staying busy down there. It's just crazy. Every week, you know, let me skip ahead to where they're actually stacking. Like, they're just, it's so nuts how quickly they're doing this stuff. I mean, look, at the, here's... Look at that. I mean, this is just, what, weeks after? <laughs> What's this tower next to it? Is that where they're building it? Oh, because they're building it vertically, not yeah. laying it down and then standing it up. Correct. Out. So they, they they basically just build a ring, stick the ring on top of the other ring, weld it, repeat. Mm. And so that's... is are those two different vehicles right there? Like, is that SN5 on the left and SN4 on the right? You know, I don't... I don't think it is. I kind of thought it was, but I... Th you think those are rings I for... I think SM4? both of these so far are number four. Um, I think the right part will be stacked on top of the left part or vice versa, I think. But serial number five does have its bulkheads and some other parts already done. So, um, yeah, so it's... <laughs> I mean, it's just nuts that they're getting to the point where they're just, just putting a rocket together like easily, you know, every other week or so, or basically every... <laughs> every month for sure um should mention real quick trevor corrected himself it is it was serial number six that was used on star hopper so we went from serial number six to now what did i say 26 mm -hmm. like isn't that crazy within within a year it's pretty amazing yeah that's so there you go. Go, actually that, that that's interesting because we keep hearing about the 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 serial numbers on the um the actual rockets that they're building, like we were just talking about, but we hadn't heard. Any, I hadn't heard anything about the Raptor production until just now. Right. So I, I think we knew over tw around twenty, or I think the community was kind of keeping track, thinking it was around twenty or so. Well, and one of the, one of the last ones when you showed those pictures of Raptors like last week or two weeks ago or whatever, um, there was a serial number eighteen. We knew they were around twenty, but twenty six is like, whoa, mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are and making these things. And how many does each? vehicle have both the heavy the super heavy and the starship together is it like 31 so the super heavy will eventually have 37 <laughs> itself wow itself God. and then the upper stage will have um eventually have six to seven yeah um i think here's my guess is at first they'll want to do the bare minimum just to get to orbit with virtually no payload so they'll be able to use, um, you know, fewer engines on the first stage because they won't fill the first stage probably all the way because that will take if you fill 
the stage all the way, <laughs> it will take 37 Raptors to lift it. You know, that's just what it takes. I'm guessing the first one, he's mentioned a few times, they'll only do like 20 some engines on the first super heavy. And mm-hmm. then they'll probably fill it enough, you know, to to get what they need out of it. And again, same thing at the upper stage, probably just three Raptors or something um, and fill it enough to, to get it into orbit and test out what they need to test out. You know, bare minimum testing mm-hmm. as they tend to be doing. So they will have to make a lot of raptors before they <laughs> fly an orbital test like there will have to be i will say at least 30 raptors that are operational that are installed on basic or around 30 raptors for the first orbital flight kind of makes you wonder if like the raptor engines are going to be like battery production for evs like that's actually going to be the thing that holds up the, the production of the the starships i think so i think that's po- I, I mean, mean possibly it's, it's definitely the hardest thing to manufacture. You know, I mean, it's a very complicated system. There's probably mm-hmm. almost more parts on the each engine than there is the rest of the rocket, you know, moving parts. I mean, they're very, very complicated pieces of machinery. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. It's yeah. When, sweet, you, when you pulled up the, uh, the, the picture last week and it was just like a bird's nest of pipes yeah. above the engine bell, just like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the streamlined version. Like there are streamlining it from that you know it used to be way more sensors on those things like sensors on every single pipe had it's like multiple sensors you know it was just mm. nuts and now they're starting to get it to the point where they're like okay we know that these are the temperatures and the way these things are operating um i should mention that for some reason i was i've been watching videos a lot about how they build sls and having seen destin from smarter every day's factory tour of ula how they build ula uh mm-hmm. the atlas 5 and, and vulcan and how they cut out the aluminum, you know, there's a lot of manufacturing time and, and energy on a CNC machine cutting grid, you know, ISO grids out of the aluminum, making aluminum light enough weight. It's insane to me that the stainless steel, that they're just literally taking rings and it's just good enough just to go without all that additional manufacturing. Like, think about how much cheaper and quicker. I mean, we're literally seeing them build a rocket, massive rocket every, again, pretty much two weeks at this point. I wonder, mm-hmm. though, how much of it, like, by the time we get to one that is like a, a solid design, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like, okay, this was like this thing flew, and this is the design. Maybe we'll tweak a couple things, but this is eighty percent of it. Mm-hmm. How 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 much more complex is it going to be by then? Because That's... it hasn't worked yet, right? So there's definitely a gap of like wherever we're at now to what it's going to be, and we can draw things up. But until the thing flies, I think you know there's a lot of like unknown still. Yeah, That's my and guess, I anyway. think I think some things like you know again yeah like you said they're right now they're just trying they're just trying to demonstrate just trying to make sure that they can handle the flight characteristics all the you know the Raptor engine stuff all of the avionics get everything just kind of going and start working on what survives reentry and then from there start literally removing parts you know maybe it is some kind of ISO grid with stainless steel maybe the more finished versions will have you know internal structures and things like that yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't, we'll see, you know. Iterative design, like always, and I'm sure by the time they're selling one to customers, like, it'll be a pretty different-looking vehicle. Lots to learn. Lots to learn. Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.